My name's Dana, and I'm an autistic adult. And this is my daughter, Sersha. She's eight, and she's autistic, too. I call myself an extroverted autistic what because- What does that mean? It means that I, I like to be around people, and I like to talk to people, but sometimes, uh, I get stressed out when I'm around people too much, so I need to like recharge my batteries. What Same. about you? Same. People think it goes away. It's nope. a kid thing, right? They think that autism is just gone on your 18th birthday or something, and that is very much not the case. My mother tried to have me diagnosed when I was 10 back in the 90s, but in the 90s, they uh, didn't diagnose women with autism. It was thought of as, or girls at the time, it was, they didn't, it was thought of as a boy's condition. It was thought of something that impacted boys. And so I left that evaluation and they kind of said, I don't know what's wrong with her. Had I had that diagnosis at 10 and had I had support and access <laughs> to resources, um, I think it, like, it would have been, it would have really impacted my self-esteem. Um, I spent a long time most of my teenage years feeling strange and uncomfortable and like there was something wrong with me. I mean, if you're socialized to behave as a girl, you're socialized to behave in a way that basically is a handbook for masking, for teaching you how to hide your autisms. You're encouraged to behave a certain way. You're encouraged to kind of like be quiet and not uh, not display your emotions, or, or your emotions are written off as being female. So like a meltdown might be written off as, you know, being a girl. I was just kind of discovering that I myself was on the spectrum when her preschool teacher came to me and said, we're thinking that maybe it might be a good idea to get Sersha assessed. So we went and we got a, an assessment and sure enough, so she was three. She was diagnosed when she was three. When she was in preschool, we had some parents who actually started a petition to have her kicked out of the preschool. They decided that their kids were scared of her and her vocalizing and her stimming. They started a petition to have her removed. Luckily, we had full support of this, the teachers and it was she did not get kicked out, but it was very stressful. Yes. Listening to your kid is so important and encouraging self-advocacy is so important. I mean, you are really good at asking for accommodations, I think. That's one thing we're really, like, Sersha has worked so hard hard on trusting herself and being able to communicate what she needs. We went to Disneyland in February. We went to a and big just... theme park. Sirsha every day would say, I need a break. I am overwhelmed. It is I go to loud. the pool. And then we went to the pool. And she swam in the pool for two hours, had that sensory break, felt amazing. And then, you know, was like re battery recharged and able to re-engage. So just, you know, like, encouraging self-advocacy, listening to what is needed, and trying to provide that when you can. And there are times when I screw up. There are times when I've said, I don't want to hear about your socks. Like, I can't listen. I can't have another fight about socks. I just don't have the energy. When that happens, like, I need to kind of take responsibility for that and apologize to her and say, like, look, you know, mom's human, mom's autistic. Sometimes mom pushes you in ways that aren't fair to you. And then it's all good. And then we usually do okay, right? Yeah.